Over the past year, yes, just one year, we saw the growth of portable monitors booming. We got our hands on a few of them to do reviews and some of them even come in a few different form factors as well. So why do we actually get a portable monitor and what is considered quote unquote a good one? Well, let's find out in today's video. What we have here is the Philips Business Portable Monitor 16B1P3300. It is a 15.6 inch portable monitor with a 60Hz panel and 1080p in resolution, packed in a rather solid chassis with a very magnificent stand. Let's start with the obvious question of why we need a portable monitor and that is an easy question to answer. That is because laptops have only one single monitor. And if we ever want to multitask, then it sucks because you, you, know, you can't really view much with just a single laptop monitor and that is why this kind of portable monitors comes in handy because it's portable as well. And as the name suggests, you can actually fit it into your backpack and take it wherever you go unlike these kind of desktop monitors that we have right here in the studio. Actually, there is yet another point to be made about portable monitors and that is it only requires one single cable to be connected to your device and then it will work. Granted, you do need to make sure that your device actually works seamlessly with this kind of portable monitors and we'll talk about that later. So how can we determine if a portable monitor is good or not? Firstly, we need to take a look at the stand. The Philips portable monitor that we have here has a really nice stand and the base also acts as the stand and it just provides a huge variety of angle for us to select from and i can say that the stand is where the strength of the philips portable monitor is i can tell you that one of the biggest issue with laptops is actually the angle of that screen and that is an inherent issue because if you've ever tried using a laptop indoors then those indoor lights from the ceiling will reflect on the screen and into your eyes and it will cause glare and annoyance and it will actually hurt your eye. So if you have this kind of angle to adjust from, then you can mitigate those effects. And secondly, the ports of the portable monitor. Depending on how you actually plan to use your portable monitor, then you might need different ports. Usually, one USB Type-C port is enough. You just connect that one single cable from your device to the portable monitor and it will immediately get both power and video signal and then it will just work out of one single cable. Of course, you will have to make sure that your device is compatible with this kind of arrangement. That is where you need to make sure your USB Type-C port does have DisplayPort out mode via USB Type-C. If your devices are using Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4, then you will most probably have this feature and I don't want to talk about DisplayPort out mode versions in this video because that is just another complicated topic on its own. But in this video, portable monitors are mostly 1080p 60Hz, so any DisplayPort out mode will work. However, if you want to use this portable monitor with a HDMI cable, then you will need to carry an external power source. Usually, some portable monitors come with double USB Type-C ports so you can connect one of it to your video source and then another one to either a power bank or power plug, whatever, your smartphone charger for example. But this Philips only comes with one single Type-C cable so it comes with a literal laptop charger to power it up instead because it's using a barrel power jack instead of another Type-C port for power. Oh, do keep in mind that portable monitors usually also come with either a mini or micro HDMI port. This Philips portable monitor comes with a micro HDMI port, which means you will have to carry yet another dongle in addition to HDMI cable, which adds more bulk if you want to carry this around as well. And the third point is actually how portable the portable monitor actually is. This can vary drastically, but it is also dependent on the first two points that we mentioned earlier. For example, some portable monitors will have a flap to protect itself, as in the screen, and also acts as a kickstand instead. Of course, there are some trade-offs because those kind of kickstand will be very flimsy, but the overall package is very slim. Just take the monitor alongside a USB Type-C cable and you can start using it already. 
This Philips portable monitor though also comes with a pouch and it is made out of a felt material. It provides a lot of protection for the portable monitor but one thing it could have approved upon is the addition of either a compartment or additional pouches at the outer side of the pouch so that you can carry this thing along with some other additional cables. That would be real nice to have actually. So with those three points out of the way, we should also talk about the color accuracy and brightness of portable monitors in general. In general, because most of the time, I wouldn't really focus much on the color accuracy or brightness because portable monitors are meant to be low powered and that is why you can power it using one single cable from your device. And yeah, the brightness is not that good and the color accuracy is definitely about 50-ish percent sRGB, that's about it. But the color accuracy is not the main point of portable monitors and that is because you just want to view some stuff on this kind of, you know, extra screen. Some portable monitors also come with a touch screen, but this one does not. Again, you will need to know what kind of requirements you need when it comes to a portable monitor because sometimes if you pay extra for a touch screen but you never use it, then why do you even buy it in the first place, right? But of course, I will also say that the Philips portable monitor here is actually pretty good if you're using it with your laptop and then you connect it with only one single cable. And if you are thinking that this USB Type-C port is meant to be connected to laptops only, then you're wrong because I have connected it to an iPad as of now, the M1 iPad Air running iOS 16, iPad OS 16. And this whole setup will also work if you're using an iPad Pro. So yeah, it opens up quite a lot of usability when it comes to this kind of portable monitors. Once you've connected the portable monitor with just one single cable, you can also hand off the portable monitor to, let's just say, to someone else if you want to do a presentation in a cafe or something like that. So that you both can look at the same thing without squishing both your eyes into a single small laptop monitor. And when you're done using the portable monitor, you can just unplug one single cable and then you can keep the whole thing inside your pouch and then carry it along with you. It's simple and clean. And for the price, portable monitors can vary a lot in terms of pricing and it kind of depends on what kind of requirements you need. And if a portable monitor sounds too good to be true with its price, like the ZSC More portable monitor that I've tested last year, then it is probably not good. So you can watch our shit show at the top right corner there. I will tell you this, for a basic 1080p 60Hz portable monitor with good features like this one, then it will probably cost somewhere around 1000 ringgit. And for this portable monitor, it is officially priced at 1399 but Philips is having a promotion right now and this portable monitor is only at 999 ringgit. And I have found some sellers selling it at an even lower price, which is real good. So yeah. Again, if you think that this portable monitor suits your use case with just one single cable, then this is good. If you plan to use it with HDMI, then maybe look at something else. So yeah, that is a very quick rundown on how you can choose your own portable monitors. And currently, I do own like three of them. <laughs> so yeah, each of them with a different purpose and I just like their portability.